downtown is a magnet for not just downtown workers or downtown residents, but also you know, people who visit downtown and frequent downtown for restaurants, arts, the symphony, the Pacers, the Colts, those are all, it's important for them to understand and appreciate the safety and security, the perception of downtown. Well, the key priorities or strategies of our task force included a perception of safety, and we heard information and data from IMPD that downtown is one of the safest areas of all of Marion County, right? That downtown being a significantly large geographic area, but it only accounts for, on any given year, three to four percent of all the crimes in the county. Our key tactics of our committee for those strategies included expanding the existing street ambassador program to add safety ambassadors to the role of the existing street ambassadors, but also hiring or enlisting others, additional personnel to be really more safety ambassadors, potentially exclusively. The second item was uh, the B-Link program and connecting up and communicating cameras that are on both private and public property downtown for the city to IMPD primarily to have access to those quick and almost real time. Some of the benefits we've seen of that over the summer have been to ameliorate crime activity that had been increasing on the canal. Got those messages connected to the cameras, established foot patrols late at night on the canal and really resolve that problem very quickly by a communication and collaborating with the residents and the neighbors in IMPD downtown to do that on the canal. So that's an example of how that can be effective. Another tactic that we looked at and adopted was addressing aggressive panhandling in the Mile Square in downtown. Well, the thing that gives me hope about our tactics and strategies is first the collaboration with the city, with IMPD, with major corporate and private stakeholders in downtown Indy as we've come together to talk about this. Garage owners and operators, private building managers, all of whom have been concerned and have been great to step up and talk with us. I'm optimistic about how committed downtown Indy, IMPD, our committee and volunteers, residents, property owners, trade associations, restaurants, hotel owners are committed to addressing this problem and making downtown vibrant. A lot of times people will think the issue of homelessness is, is straightforward, that someone just lost their job and they're not, maybe they're lazy and go get a job. That's not the case. The, the issue of homelessness is so complex and because it's different for every single individual, there's no one right answer. There's no cookie cutter answer to solve homelessness and the issue of homelessness. So it has to be person by person and tailored. That individual plan needs to be tailored for that person. I think there's a couple reasons why we're perceiving the increase in homelessness downtown. Um, part of it is that with um, so much of the workforce working from home, um, homeless individuals are much more visible. Uh, we always find an increase in the summer months of people living outside. Um, it's the weather is acceptable to do that as opposed to when uh, you're in the winter time and, and freezing cold. The other thing that we're quite worried about is with the eviction moratorium lifting, right, the rate of eviction and the number of individuals that don't have that support system, they now will be knocking on the doors of many service providers to try and get that, that help. Um, because if they have no other, no other option, then they'll become homeless looking for shelter in either one of the overnight emergency shelters or if we can get them um, connected with Rapid Rehousing Fund that can get them back into a home. Right? What we're trying to do is now figure out on some short-term basis, what can we do as a collaboration between the business owners, the, let's say, street outreach teams and IMPD to really help um, connect those individuals with the right services. So really understanding, again, the barriers that someone is facing and then what's the right path, if you will, for that individual to become housed. Some of the barriers that we see uh, individuals facing, one, first and foremost, we see a lot of the individuals, they have no support system. So they may not have any family or friends here that they can, can lean on if they fall into hard times. You can imagine the number of people today that live paycheck to paycheck, Right. You have one mishap, so your car breaks down, you have a medical condition, something happens, you may not have any savings, and at that point, it's kind of a, a, a downward spiral. What gives me hope is that the discussions now are around solutions, 
and getting people housed not around how do we move them out of the downtown area or how do we move folks to another area so it's out of sight, out of mind. A couple of the short-term solutions that we've been talking about um, you know, are more uh, IMPD having greater presence both on foot and bike as well as you know, some additional cameras for downtown and then working with having service providers like myself on these committees to really talk about the solutions and the services aspect. I would just ask that everyone remember that we're all human beings. So all of these individuals are a mom or a dad, a son or a daughter, um, and, and, and try and keep the human aspect of it in mind. I live in Meridian Kessler for some just short of 30 years and uh, my wife and I decided that we wanted to live in the downtown and now live in Lockerbie Square and, uh, and love it. I mean, livability is I think critical to a downtown because if you aren't a 24 hour or 18 hour uh, city that Indianapolis really tries to be, if you don't have people living downtown, then you're really not going to have a vibrant downtown. The Livability Committee is, is attempting to accomplish the strategies that will lead us to developing uh, what we describe as social cohesion. And as a downtown resident, you know, we're working even harder to try to support the businesses that are here today that are continuing to try to, to make a, a place for themselves when they're only at a let's say a restaurant at 50% capacity. One of the things that our committee, you know, maybe, you know, just sort of like a light bulb kind of moment realized is that we don't really have a mile square neighborhood to speak of. We don't really talk about the mile square as a residential neighborhood when in fact we have a number of residential uh, destinations within that mile square that exist now and do we need to create an identity for them just like Chatham Arch or Lockerbie Square or Fountain Square? When you look out to the outward counties, how many people are coming in for a symphony? How many people are coming in for the Colts or the Pacers or a convention or various other kinds of things? And you start realizing that these amenities not only serve the immediate downtown neighborhoods, but they actually serve everyone. So how do we enhance those to even a greater degree? How do we, how do we cause them to be you know, something even better than they already are? That we can't have a downtown that is just exclusive for one particular demographic. We've got to cross all social boundaries and all economic boundaries. And so we have to make sure that we're being as inclusive and diversify the downtown as, as much as we possibly can. Well, I think that you know this the the entire livability question is something that downtown Indy is absolutely has to be sort of front and center on, in my opinion. I think that we we have to be seen as a leader in that we, even though we're not out there developing property and bringing units online and and building playgrounds or you know improving parks we can we can do a lot of uh, championing of these ideas we have seen just how much growth from a residential standpoint that has happened in the downtown in the last say 10 years and if you fast forward another 10 years can we do it again i believe we can mm -hmm.